Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name is Kayleen, I'm your host. I am the principal fiber artist and yarn dyer behind Little Bean Loves Yarn and Little Bean Crochet on Etsy. As always, you can find my information here on the screen. I always try and put it up for you. Hopefully you can see it with my stripes. Sometimes it's hard to read with my stripes. Anyway, so um, welcome back to everyone new returning everyone who is subscribed not subscribed i hope you enjoyed today's video um so long story short i did not have my laptop for like easily accessible for about a month so my screen on my laptop went out and i was only able to use my laptop sometimes when it was hooked up to an external monitor. So I haven't been able to film a podcast. I haven't been able to edit any of my ride back footage until this week when I got my laptop back. I actually got it back on Friday uh, last week. So Today, I am finally bringing you my Rhinebuck footage from my trip, and so if you are interested in seeing that, please keep watching. Um, if you don't want to see the actual footage of when I was at the festival, you're very much welcome to skip ahead. I'll put a timestamp on the screen. It's about 15 minutes or so of edited footage, which was great. It was so wonderful to meet everyone and to see everyone. So let's just get into that now. Well, good morning to everyone. Uh, it is about nine o'clock in the morning and I have stopped for breakfast. I am going to go to Red's in Salem. Uh, it's one of my most favorite breakfast places but I am so excited to get on the road to Rhinebeck and I hope to see you guys all there and I'm going to take you on my journey with me. See you later. Well, that was a very long drive. I have arrived at the hotel. I'm not gonna film my roommate's things, but uh, I just walked by where India Untangled is setting up and it's so exciting. I see some familiar names, familiar faces. So I'm very excited to go to that later and hopefully I'll be able to capture some more of my day today and bring you along. Sounds good. So I'm super stoked because I am going to head to Needles Up arrived in time for it which it's from three o'clock until six o'clock so it's a nice in between between now and in the untangled and summer and all those things so i'm gonna head there
in to grab a drink but I, I shopped earlier. I did oh, leave something. Yeah, so it <laughs> you, was, didn't, you didn't take everything? <laughs> I took one of just saying near everything okay, but I okay. <laughs> but not well, all as it. long as there's something left in there for me. There I'll is. be very happy absolutely. about that. It's just very well stocked. Yes. So we'll look forward to tomorrow. Yes, absolutely. So much fun. Yeah. All right. things. Oh my goodness, it's bright. And I can share. We got Lobby NMA. We got Lobby NMA coming down the street. Everybody's here. Everybody's here. Oh. It's such a beautiful day. Oh, I'm so red. Holy butt. I don't even know what time it is. What am I going to do for supper? I think I'm going to go some friends for supper but it's beautiful it's a beautiful day hopefully you can hear anything I'm saying there's so much to see here in little little Ryan Beck New York and I guess down the road I think that way is where the fairgrounds are so tomorrow I'll be bringing you along to the fair I feel really silly talking about that got people looking at me Yeah. 
was just like filming down here. Okay. <laughs> I'm so shiny and hot and sweaty and I look awful. But it was really fun. I have to take a breather, so I'm headed back to my hotel room, which is in this hotel. And I'm going to like unload my bag. I only bought one skein of yarn at India Untangled. I bought the La Bienne um, yarn that is for the festival. So it's like Latam on Rhinebeck or Latam on Rhinebeck, Rhinebeck. So yeah, I did that. And it's like a maze to get back to my room. So I'm just gonna do that for now. And I totally made a fool of myself for the question.
fun today. It's a beautiful day. It's a little warm for this day, but I don't care. I finish the sweater, I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it. This too, I was like, I don't care. I'll wear a tank top underneath it and let it open. Christy. Hello. Hello. And Amber's already put on her earmuffs. I don't know if we can yeah. see her over there. She's already wearing her earmuffs. They're fabulous. Uh, I've dropped three stitches in my knitting. And it's very sad. I think I'm going to have a heart attack. The day's winding down. It's getting cooler, which is wonderful. And I am so excited and happy. All the people I met got to say hi and chat with and just people I admire, people that inspire me and I met some people that I inspire them and it was so wonderful. So um, hopefully I see more people tomorrow. I'm planning to be here for at least half the day. So if I see you, I hope I do. I hope I see you and I hope you say hi. Um, I'll see you guys later. Okay, so that's it that's everything um long story short i was not able to stay for the second day of rhinebeck uh we had some family issues going on so i went home a little bit early um to help relieve my husband so i didn't get to see anyone really on the second day but i did see a ton of people on the first day and just again a nice warm from the bottom of my heart thank you to anyone who came up and said hello to me um for all the people who were so gracious to take photos with me to take a little footage with me uh to the people who inspire me thank you from the bottom of my of my heart every single day um you certainly bring inspiration to me as an artist to me as a person to me as a podcaster um to continue doing what i've been doing um because you get to make so many wonderful connections with people either via youtube or ravelry or on instagram or facebook and all of the facebook groups that i'm in um, i get to chat and be with other like-minded folks so uh, again thank you to everyone who made the trip so wonderful thank you to my awesome roommates who shared room with me uh for christy for inviting me along uh for wanda and amanda for being such gracious um and welcoming folks into the room and also to gretchen and her family who were so incredibly gracious nice kind of like-minded people as myself so um thank you again it was a pleasure to meet all of you it was a pleasure to share my experience with all of you as well on this format and i hope you really enjoyed it um i tried to put a little bit more calming music in there because it was literally the most chaotic thing i've ever been to the most crowded thing i've ever been to it was an otherworldly experience and certainly if you have the ability to go definitely please do it is a wonderful joining experience for the whole entire knitting and crochet community the fiber community spinning community people who make um, it is just wonderful so i look forward to doing and attending more fiber shows next year so hopefully i'll be able to maybe then at one um uh, i wasn't able to this year but i certainly was taken aback by the crowd at indian tangled 
Holy moly, you can't even really see it in the footage or feel it until I'm like kind of standing. I was standing and chatting with me, Mina um, <laughs> and just like the crowds were encroaching on you. You couldn't even breathe. Um, I ended up spinning in the second room. It was one of the first clips where you came around the corner and you saw this woman kind of setting up. She was actually setting up spinning wheels and I ended up spinning for about an hour, <laughs> just sitting there next to her watching everybody walk by because I had the most girth around me uh, without people. So uh, anyway, it was very interesting and wonderful. And I would like to show you the things that I got at Ryan Beck. I did show a little video on my Instagram but if you don't follow me there, I am very much happy to share the things that I received, um, things that I purchased, and also things that were gifted to me. So here they are now. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to start here. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Um, I'm going to start here with some things that were gifted to me. Um, I had such gracious and wonderful roommates, and we all brought gifts for one another. So um, Christy, who hosted us in, in our room, she was... She sent, she gave me yarn, which I'll show you, it's in a different bag, but she gave me some yarn and I also gave some tote bags with you know, yarn and notions and things like that. But this is some of the other gifts that were given to me, so I'm going to show them to you now. I also apologize in advance for any crinkling. Um, but I have a ton of buttons in here and business cards and everything. Like I haven't even really gone through this in the last few weeks. This was my map from the Untangled. Here's a mini skein from the Knitting Butterflies podcast. I wish I brought swag with me. I really do. Um, oh, a lot of whales. I have a stitch marker in here, I think. Okay, <clears throat> so I think this was also from a podcaster. It's a bunch of wooden stitch markers, buttons, things of that nature. Okay. Ooh. All right, I think the rest of these things are gifts. So I'm going to show you everything. So this is from Amanda and her mom, Wanda. They run Vatter's Felt Farm, and they do a lot of uh, felted and fiber things. Um, they do spinning, dyeing, combining. And she gave these little ornaments to us. This one looks like Merida from Brave, I think. And she's like a little fairy. She has these beautiful wings in the back here. This curly, curly locks of hair. And she's just gorgeous. I think she's going to be a beautiful addition to our Christmas tree this year. Uh, we love handmade things. And so this is one of my most favorite things that I received. Uh, but this was from them. And also this at least I think this was from them. I can't remember. And then this was definitely from them. This is a pumpkin. Um, like a wool felted pumpkin. The stem is felted. And there's some locks here for the rest of the pumpkin. I'm pretty sure this was from them. I can't, <laughs> I can't be sure. All of these, we exchanged gifts all together. I'm pretty sure that was from them. Um... <clears throat> Then, I also received, let's see, is this paper? So from Gretchen, Gretchen gave us this spiced tea. Um, I, I don't remember the name of it, she didn't put a label on it, but she told us to put like a scoop in hot water to enjoy it. It's like spicy chai, it's like a chai tea. I can't open it right now without spilling it all over myself. So I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> I have not gone into it yet. A tea strainer, because there was more tea that she gave. Loose tea, it was like called Christmas tea. It must be in another bag, but she gave me a tea strainer, which I will use. And then more stuff from, I forget who gave me this. This is just a soap bar, and it has this spicy, nutty smell. It's, it smells a lot like cinnamon. <clears throat> this is a bath bomb for the children. It did get a little crunched, so I have it in a bag. But this is like a citrus bath bomb. This is from Amanda and her mom. Also, I've got some wax melts here that are gingerbread. 
wax melts. They smell pretty much like the holidays. <clears throat> um, Gretchen also gave us these nougats that are like um, almond nougats, I believe. I have a couple more bath bombs in here, and then I have some, oh yeah, this is the body butter bar. It is from Amanda and Wanda, and it's cocoa butter, coconut oil, beeswax, and orange essential oil. So I'm very excited for that. I really like sweet orange, and I also have a lip balm in there that I'm not going to take out, but it was lovely, <laughs> lovely gifts. I gave everyone some tea and some yarn, and I made some little stitch markers out of um, felt balls, little felt balls that I just put string in there, glued it together, and made little stitch markers. So that was really fun. And then for other things that I got at Rhinebeck, I think there are also some gifts in here. This is the bag that I was carrying around. Uh, for those who follow me on Instagram, you saw me post that bag. Um, <clears throat> And I was able to collect an amass mass of pins from everybody who I saw, who brought pins with them. Uh, I graciously, graciously took them all, put them on my bag, displayed them proudly. Um, <clears throat> and then, okay, here we go. So this was also a gift from Gretchen. This was probably one of the most awesome gifts she gave us. It was like the shopping bag. So I had this with me when I went to the festival on Saturday and I used it as a shopping bag, but it folds up into this little pouch. It's like a Vita, Vita, Vita bag. Um, I'd never seen something like this before, so I thought that was really cool. All right, so let us go through everything. I'm just gonna take them out in a random order, however they're in here. So that I'm not um, stumbling all over myself. Uh, fiber that I purchased. I did purchase a lot of fiber. Um, this is from the Sheep Shed in Mountain View Farm. This is actually local to me in Linfield, Massachusetts. And this is Merino Yak Silk 4 ounce um, bundle of fiber. So it is a nice natural um, gray tone, a very nice neutral gray. And you can see the sheen of the silk. Uh, I could not resist. I kept coming back to this when I went into that main building. Um, I kept going around and going around and I kept coming back to this bundle and I said, you know what, I'm just going to go home and bring it out with me. So this is who it is from. And then this is the final content. They did have eight ounce bundles as well, but I only wanted four ounces. So the other fiber that I bought was from the Loop booth. Um, you saw the clip of the booth. I've already started spinning on this. This is a Loop Bump, and this is the Loop Lux Blend, which is a an MCS blend, which is 25% cashmere, 25% silk, and 50% merino. It is extremely soft, and it is extremely fragile in terms of drafting it out the way that the Loop Bumps are made. It's kind of um, pre-drafted in it's like a centripetal ball. It's a very interesting uh, presentation. I've never worked with fiber in this format before, but I really like it, and I think it would be even better if it didn't have silk or cashmere in it, if it was just straight up wool. Um, it would have maybe a little more strength to it, because I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I've also been sick, so excuse all of this. Um, but it's a very fluffy, very soft, very beautifully spinnable fiber. So I've spun probably two of the colors. So this went, you can see the colors, it's like red, purple, blue, and green. Inside was yellow, then black, then orange, then black, then red, then purple, then green. So it goes like the color, then black, then that, then black. So I've spun two of the colors so far out of this bat, and this was 4.7 ounces of fiber. So almost five ounces, very generous. I'm spinning it very thin. I'm looking to three ply it like I normally do, and I'll probably end up with a sport weight or um, fingering to sport weight yarn. <clears throat> okay. Open up my bag of wonder here. Um, this, oh, here's some more stuff. Here's the tea. I found the tea. This tea was from Gretchen. It's like a Christmas. It's from Mountain Hollow Farm. It's called Holiday Cheer, and it literally smells like Christmas time this tea so I'm looking forward to that and she also gave me a cupcake soap which is so adorable I haven't used it yet it smells so good and there's more nougat in here <laughs> there's more almond nougat in this bag like literally sitting at the bottom of this bag okay anyway so the other thing that I bought that you saw 
on the vlog. This is from Jenny the Potter. I got a pair of earrings, which unfortunately one of the um, ceramic pieces just fell off. I think the um, jump ring wasn't closed all the way. I also have two kids who like to pull up my ears, so it's my own fault. But <clears throat> um, I did lose one earring, one of the pieces of the earring, not the actual earring because there's the whatever. Anyway, so I got this mug. I haven't used. <laughs> I literally have not unpacked this stuff since I got home. Um, but this is the mug that I got from Jenny the Potter. I love coffee mugs. I collect coffee mugs. I have a bunch of different themed coffee mugs. They didn't have any um, ones with handles. Here's her little Jenny the Potter stamp, craft stamp, crafters stamp. They didn't have any more with handles, but that's okay. Um, I don't mind having a handleless mug. But it's beautiful. It's, they shared a whole bunch of things that were like trees, and then some with octopus, some with flowers. Um, so all different kinds of designs. This one had the right hand feel, since they're all handmade. I picked up about, you know, 20 different mugs. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. And then I picked up this one. I'm like, oh yeah, this one is perfect. So um, this is the mug that I came home with. And I was very glad that I waited in that line, but I was one of the first into the door in the main gate. So I was able to just get in line, wait, and there were things left in the booth when I got there. So anyway, the next thing that I'm seeing in this bag is this beautiful soft blank from the Needles Up trunk show. This is an Andre Sunit's sock blank. I do have one other sock blank of hers, which is a hipster, hipster, and it's a deer with sunglasses. So this is her needles up blank, very beautifully hand painted um, with those tricolor sheep, which was the logo for the event. And it is in her, it's just a sock base, 75, 25, 460 yards, 100 grams. Um, <clears throat> Very well done. Uh, I do have to say, when you look at these and you see them pictured online, you would think, I mean, she certainly uses a stencil to get her shape, like to make sure things look pretty uniform, but this is hand painted. She takes the time to paint every single piece of this sock blank. So from where the outsides are painted, this beautiful blue color, to each sheep being shaded in uniquely, the faces, you know, it's all hand done. The The meticulous nature of these is, is worth every penny, I think. Um, it is a bit pricier. I think she charges $45 for a sock blank. So, um, so it is up there in price, but I certainly think that this level of artistry and detail um, in, a, in a yarn piece, I think it's totally worth it. And it's gonna be something very special for myself, so. There's that. Um, the next thing that I'm seeing in here is also fiber. Oh, and here's also the gift that uh, Christy gave me, Christy Labour. She's also an Eddie Dyer. She has her brand, which is the Labour line. And this is called Sisterhood of the Sheep, which was this cute little nickname that they gave our, our group um, that I was new to this year. Uh, and this is just 75% superwash wool, 25% nylon. It's a DK weight, 246 yards, 100 grams. I'll undo the band here so you can see it. <clears throat> but it's beautifully dyed, very fall. It has um, browns, reds, greens, some brown speckling, red speckling. It's very well dyed. I'm very, very pleased with this yarn. I can't wait to use it in something. Um, <clears throat> I think she reskains these herself. I wonder if she works from cones. Um, just based on how this is tied off, it looks like she winds her own skeins from cones. But anyway, that's just the diary and me looking at the yarn. So this is the final skein, and I apologize for the focus. But it's just beautiful. I'm very, very happy to have received that. It was such a lovely gift. Thank you, Christy. The next thing I'm seeing in here is fiber, and this is from Classy Squid Fiber Company, Amanda's company. She is local to me in Massachusetts, and this is on her opulence base, which is a 62.5% Rambu Rim 
Bouillet, cashmere, and tussa silk and bamboo blend. So it's 65, 12, 12, 12 of those things. And this is the Winter Sunset colorway. And I love that she has these little stickers. This says Spin Classy, which I totally agree with. Um, but this is a beautiful gradient braid. I just broke in the seal, but it's a beautiful sunset colorway. It goes from this deep brown purple through blues, deep indigo, purple, pink, red, yellow, and then back again. So, and you can see the silk and the bamboo kind of blended into this braid. It's beautiful. And it is so soft. I am so happy and excited that I picked up this braid. <clears throat> and I'm very much looking forward to spinning it. I'm still trying to plan out my spins, how I want to um, use my fiber that I've purchased over the last month or so. I do have more fiber that I purchased from Bren, who is the indie dyer uh, behind Snurb Yarn and Fiber. And I'll show you that in a little while, but I want to show my Rhinebeck stuff. Okay, so the <clears throat> next thing I'm seeing in here is the, the very creepy pamphlet, the map and program from the festival. And then I am seeing here, this is the La Bienname color. I, I think I said La Bienname on my video about 100 billion times because I was looking forward to this. Um, meeting her and also to see this yarn. So this is the Indian Tangled colorway, which is Autumn uh, Rhinebeck. Yeah, Autumn uh, Rhinebeck. Uh, so Autumn and Rhinebeck. And it is on her singles base, which is 400 yards, 100% merino yarn. So it's not super washable, but it's beautiful. It has speckles of brown and teal, red, purple, pretty much, pretty much all the colors of fall on this beautiful heathered gray base. So that was the yarn I got from India Tangle. <clears throat> and then let's see, we have some gum and some more wrappers and a Kit Kat bar <laughs> and a bunch of other things. But then I have this yarn, which is was another bucket list purchase, which was from Legacy Fiber Arts, which is Sue and Chelsea's brand of indie dye yarn. This was their Needles Up colorway, which is a beautiful speckled orange, pink, kind of like a magenta color, like orange, magenta, yellow, pink kind of colorway. So this is on their Steel Toes base, which is a 7525. And then this mini skein set, which was also on their Steel Toes base, is called Shrunken Heads. And I believe, I think this might have been a Halloween bundle but I liked the colors that were in this bundle. So, I'm not going to take it out of the package because I won't be able to put it back in. So <clears throat> anyway, that, my friends, is my haul from Rhinebeck. It was very fun. I would do it again. I will go next year, I think. Um, if I can go maybe with my family, I will take them along with me. Um, my son might still be a little little, for the festival, but my daughter would absolutely love it to see all the sheep and the games and there's petting zoo there. Um, <clears throat> lots of really good food. So I think she would enjoy it. Okay, so now let me get some other things from the other room and I will be right back. Ooh, okay, <clears throat> so I apologize. I'm slowly getting more and more hoarse, which is really frustrating. So I have four braids here that I purchased from this country. Okay. So on two separate shop updates for Bren. So I was on a mission, you know, the last couple of months <clears throat> to get some more fiber because I ran out of fiber. Um, so I wanted to get some new colors, some new blends um, to spend more time spinning. So one of the things I purchased for myself was a double treadle for my babe spinning wheel. Um, I do have a babe production wheel. It was purchased second hand from my friend Sheena. So again, thank you very much. That wheel is getting a lot of use. Um, <laughs> and I purchased a double treadle um, in the hopes and plans of spinning more and I have been I immediately cast off the spinning that I was doing which was on the Targi that I had dyed myself which I will get 
from the other room in a moment uh, and I'll show you the final spin on that but I wanted to show you some more fiber that I purchased from Bren. So Bren owns um, Snerve Yarn and Fiber. She's a beautifully talented dyer. She's a, a wonderful person. Uh, from how I know her online, she is, is just great. Um, so I am going to show you these. So on two separate shop updates, she had some fiber. Um, two of the braids I purchased are just regular colors that she dyed. And then two of the braids are the special um, October color of the month, which was called Conjured. So I'm going to show you these right now. These are all 8515 Polworth soap blends. So this one here, I'm not going to take it out of the bag. It is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's got some beautiful, it's almost reminiscent of her gemstone here, but it has these teal, purple, and kind of this peachy pink color scattered throughout the entire braid. Um, it's kind of a gradient type dye. And then this one as well has that same peachy color, but this one has some blues and greens in there as well. So I could potentially spin both of these braids back to back and then ply it up and make one huge 8 ounce um, skein. And then the colorway of the month was called Conjured. <clears throat> Sorry, it's an 80-20 blend. Um, Polworth Silk, and this is her favorite blend, I think, um, and I certainly love spinning with it as well. But it is the richest autumn color I think I've ever seen in my life. Um, it has this bright teal here, or aqua, some burnt orange, dark, these are dark purples and blues, yellows. It's just gorgeous. Um, this braid is a little darker generally. Sorry about that. So I'm very excited for these. I planned to try and spin these together into one project as well. Uh, maybe to do a two-ply, a really fine two-ply, and make a really interesting marled yarn. So yeah, very vibrant, very beautiful. Um, I am extremely excited to start spinning on these. And so let me show you the yarn that just came off my wheel. Um, it is the um, I keep saying um <laughs> to get better, <laughs> better in practice on, on podcasting. I've spent too much time away. Um, 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 um. So I am eager to show you the yarn that I had, well, the fiber that I had dyed, which was a Targi, 100% Targi braid. It was the Magic is My Colorway, and I spun it up into a beautiful yarn that I three-plied. It's a fingering fingering-ish weight. It's about 500 yards. It's just over four ounces. It's like 125 grams or 130 grams of fiber. <clears throat> and I think it's around 500 yards. So it's about fingering weight, light fingering weight. And so I'll show you that now. Okay. Now that I've gone over and hacked up a lung uh, so you can hear me. <laughs> um, so this is the yarn finished. So this yarn was spun from that braid that I dyed, so it was 100% Targi. I got the Bear Wool from Port Fiber, which is a shop up in Maine, so local to me. Um, I believe it is a local Targi too, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Casey is the owner there. She's very sweet, very funny. You should follow her on Instagram. But this is the yarn that came out of that fiber. So it was spun across the top so I took I dyed it like a gradient so it starts as like blues and grays and then goes into this purple color there we go and the plot I'm still figuring plying yarn that's this fine because I thought I had enough spin on most of it but there are areas that are slightly under plied but you can see um, it's about a fingering weight yarn and it is the finest yarn that I've spun so far as a three ply. So I spun it across the top to maintain the gradient and then Navajo plied it um, to keep the color changes within themselves. So I, I really worked hard to have um, good control over the colors I was spinning and the order I was spinning them in and blending um, the colors together to make a better transition. Um, there are areas that are slightly thicker than others, but overall it's a fingering weight. I'm trying to find an area. So here's an area, for example. 
you can see the twist on this section right here is just a little bit loose. Um, I thought I had enough twist and then once I set it and thwacked it and dried it um, there were a couple of areas that did end up like that. So I think there are ways that I could correct it. I could put it back through the wheel, reset the twist, and then be done with it. But I think I'm just going to leave it as is because I'm keeping this for myself for a selfish project. But it's super soft and bouncy and I am very pleased. I think the die reads really well on this base. Um, the colors that I intended to be there are there and I'm really happy with the final product. And we can compare that to the spin I had from the bat. So this was the bat that I got from Misty Mountain Makers, which has bamboo. So the pink and blues that are in there are the bamboo. This was also spun as finely as I could. And with, um, with a Navajo ply at the end, but this is not a gradient. This is just, it was from an art type bat. So it had like chunks of bamboo and stuff in there and merino. Um, overall, this reads as a bit of a navy with slight uh, variations in tone, pinks, purples, I mean pinks and blues and gray. But from afar, it reads pretty much as a navy. So I thought maybe I could do a project with both of these, but I think that this yarn is slightly thicker. This might be more of a decay weight, and this is more of a fingering, so I won't be using these in the same project. Um, but you can certainly see the difference and feel the difference in the yarn when it's spun from a bat versus spun from a combed top prep. And I spin the same way generally. I, I generally will spin with a short forward draw or short backward draw, depending on um, the fiber. Sometimes I do a supported long draw, but most of the time it's a short forward draw. And um, this yarn came out far more textured. Um, there were chunks of bamboo in there, and the yarn itself is fuzzier, and I think it's because it was a carded bat versus a combed top prep. So the yarn, the fibers were not um, sitting in the same direction generally. They were more tangled together. So the, the yarns came out differently. So you can see this is a bit smoother and this is a bit more textured, but I think they both are soft. This is slightly softer, but I think it's because this has more texture, um, but they're both extremely bouncy and I'm really happy with them. Okay, so the last thing is dye work. And to be honest, it's been quiet on the dye front, mostly because I was working on a large wholesale order for the entire month of October. So on October 2nd, I received a huge wholesale order, huge for me, wholesale, wholesale order. Um, mind you, I am a stay-at-home mom. I try and record a podcast. I take care of two toddlers and I have to manage my whole life and my business as well. And I have only a stove, which is here, and two dye pans to work with, and a small table, which you can see back there has my reskater on it, and that's all I have. So I'm only able to dye at once eight skeins simultaneously, and I can only dye up to as much as my drying rack can hold. And typically I only have two to three hours per day if I'm dying to dye, like having a dye day, it's usually two to three hours at the maximum. So I have to choose what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to do housework or if I'm going to dye. So for the month of October, I was really focused on this wholesale order. It was an order that was over 100, 100 skeins. And in between all of this, I had, you know, Halloween and stuff, but I also had the Rhinebeck trip and also doing classes for my local yarn shop. So it was a very busy month for me, so there wasn't a lot of dyeing that was done for the shop. However, once the trip was over and the wholesale order was shipped, uh, I did set aside time and I did a huge dye last week and I updated the shop on Saturday. And it's been a while since I've been here in this format on YouTube to show you what I've been up to, so I'm gonna show you a few of the things that I don't think you've had a chance to see yet. 
So the first thing I'm going to show you is a kit that I put together. It is a small sock kit and here it is. It is probably the most adorable thing I've ever done. Um, as you all know, I have a circular sock machine and I can knit my own socks, I can knit my own samples, swatches, and things. And um, <clears throat> as inspired by Amber, the yarn hoarder, who I also met, which I was so excited to meet her, um, she was knitting her tubes. And I think also Tracy from Nora George Yarn, just, excuse me, does the same thing where she knits a tube and then cuts in a heel and a toe. So I decided that's how I was going to knit my Christmas socks, which was I was going to knit all of these tubes from my stash yarn and then create socks for all of my family and friends who wanted socks. So I'm still working on all of that and I can show you that in a whip bag, which is somewhere here. So I can show you that here uh, since it's relevant. I do knit them two at a time. There's some squeaking happening outside and I don't know what it is. Um, <clears throat> so here are these socks. I, these are, this is in the Jinx Yarns colorway, I can't remember, uh, but it's self-striping yarn, 60 stitches, about 8 stitches per inch. They are 100 row tubes, and these are made for a lady's, uh, lady's foot, generally. Um, they fit size, like, many inches around, I can't remember now, seven inches around or so, so seven, so anywhere from like nine to 11 inches, depending on how much negative ease you like in your sock, most would say like one to two inches of negative ease, some people like more, so that's what these are. These are a gift, but I cut in the heels. Uh, Fairy Little has been doing a bunch, I got to meet her too. Uh, she's been doing a bunch of tutorials about how she um, is working socks and doing afterthought heels. So that's what I'm working on right now. These are the heels. Uh, they don't take me very long to do at all, but I've been lingering on this pair for a while. But it was my inspiration to put together some kits for you. So a lot of people, when I mention that I have a sock machine, the first thing they say, well, that's cheating. It's not necessarily cheating. It's just a tool to help make things move along more quickly, especially for me, as a business, having a business, it's really helpful for me to create sample socks or sample swatches for my local yarn shop or other shops that are carrying my yarn. If it's requested of me, I can do it. But for gifting and stuff, everyone says, oh, I wish I had one. I would make so many socks. So I said, you know what? I'm going to share the love. I'm going to knit up some sock tubes of my colorways, and I'm going to give you a mini skein, put it together as a little set. And yeah, it's a lot of work for me, but if it makes your gift giving a little bit easier, whether you knit the socks for yourself or you knit them for a friend or a family member who's knit worthy, um, I think it's totally 100% worth it. So in this kit, you get two tubes of pre-knit stockinette with the waist yarn. So if you can see in there is green yarn. Um, that's the waist yarn, so it holds the stitches on until you pick them up. <clears throat> you get two 100 row tubes and you get a 30 gram or two 20 gram mini skeins of a contrast color for heels, toes, and cuffs. 30 grams is plenty of yarn to do heels, toes, and cuffs. And I wanted to include that little bit of extra versus a 20 gram skein um, to, if you wanted to make your cuffs longer that you could, that you'd have enough yarn to do so. Like to do all three things. So that's it. it I think I called it a sock emergency kit. So like emergency socks, like you need it like break glass, like here you go. So I wanted to share that with you guys and I wanted to be able to help make your life a little bit easier maybe for this holiday season if you are knitting or gifting, knitting gift socks and you don't have enough time and taking some of the legwork out of it for you. So I hope you enjoy it. There's only a couple of these kids, kits left and if there's a really huge request for it, I will put more together for the holiday season, but it literally takes, if you are a sock knitter already, you know that putting in heels, toes, and cuffs takes less than one day to do, so literally you can have socks done in a day. <clears throat> okay, that being said, the other thing that I have here, this was a sock blank. This was one of my watermelon sock blanks, and I knit up a sock tube to show the gradient. <clears throat> so, if you recall the sock blanks I did, they were a collaboration with um, Lynn over at Sunshine and Bubblegum. Hi Lynn, if you're watching. Um, and I get questions all the time about how my sock blanks knit. And 
So I wanted to show you how they knit up. And now the fade, fade is all the rage. Everybody's fading the fades, everybody fades everything. So what I wanted to show you was that one of my sock blanks really will do a speckled fade. Now this is a speckled fade, this is done on a 60 stitch sock machine, about eight stitches per inch, which is about my normal gauge for socks. Um, and this was one sock blank. So I, you could get, if you used contrasting heels, toes, and cuffs, you could get four pairs, you could get four pairs of socks, two of this and two of this out of one sock blank. And this was a single stranded, double, double ended sock blank. So it started at green, went to pink, and then fades all the way back to green again. Now they're not twins, they would be sisters, just, you know, closely related sisters, or a mom and a daughter who look like sisters, you know what I'm saying? Um, but if you want to try a fade and do a fade without having to weave in ends, I highly recommend purchasing one of my sock blanks or trying a sock blank that's dyed in a similar way to my own if you have one in your stash, because this is how they knit up. Um, but the way that I dye them and this is this was intentional and a lot of people always wonder what they look like when they're knit up and so I wanted to show you and take the time to explain to you how it works so the way I dye my sock blanks is so that they will be speckled and so that they have um, kind of a gradient that goes from one color to the next to the next to the next and there aren't many sock blanks that are dyed the way that I dye them. A lot of people do hand paint them or dye them with stripes, but I really wanted to have a grade, a gradient, um, and the speckled gradient is really, it's really everywhere right now, and there's even a sock pattern that is for speckled uh, gradients, and I think it was La Bien May, it was a collaboration uh, from Andrea Mowry and um, the dyers behind La Bien May, but <clears throat> You could get a speckled, you could get a pair of speckled gradient socks out of one sock blank without changing yarn. So this is the watermelon color. I have other colors. I have the fall color, which is really beautiful. It's called Leaf Peepers, and it goes from these greens into oranges and yellows and reds. I also have Into the Pensive, which is, or Into the Pensive from um, Harry Potter, uh, which is a dark like aubergine type color into a mauve, into a navy. Um, not all of them are double ended, so you, you wouldn't get, you know, closely related sisters, you'd probably get cousins out of your socks, but um, I think they're beautiful in any case. Uh, I do save projects on Instagram, so if you tag me on Instagram and you have one of these and you tag me in your socks, please let me know, send me an earburn, send me a message so that I know, because I do save them and I plan to do a, col a collage by the end of the year of all the projects used using my yarn. So I was thinking about putting this in a kit and just making it like a mega melon and um, having it be like the one the one giant sock kit that I have because I don't plan on making any watermelon socks right now. Okay so then the last part here I'm going to try and make this very quick again is the yarn that I've been dyeing for shop updates. So I just did a recent shop update. It was only three or four colors, but I dyed across four bases. So most of the bases were sparkle sock, single ply, uh, simple sock, everyday sock, and merino DK, which is a 250 yard uh, DK. And I'm gonna show them to you now. I'm just gonna show them to you on whatever base I happen to pick off the shelf. But I'll show you all the colors that are in stock right now in the shop. Okay, so there are two new colors that I dyed and it was based on Stranger Things. I do plan on dyeing um, Never Say Die uh, across several bases this week. Hopefully I can get some of that done tomorrow or Thursday. I don't know if they'll be ready to go for Saturday, but I'm going to try. Um, and then there were two colors <clears throat> that were based on the most recent season of Stranger Things. If you've watched, please don't spoil for those who haven't, but I've seen the whole thing and it was really, really, really good. So this one, is I drew the colors from my original colorway called 11. So it is a mauve and navy, and this has brown and black speckles as well. So I think I called this one 11 Goes Bitchin. This is on this merino decay. And then the other colorway that I dyed, this is Sister Use Your Pain. And this was based on 
another character in the second season of Stranger Things. And again, I will not spoil, but this one, it's dyed very similarly to this color so that you could potentially use them in a fade or in the same type of project if you needed two closely related colors. Uh, plus, if you know what I mean, they are related. So um, <clears throat> this was dyed with a deeper purple, a more lilac purple, the navy and brown. And I believe there's a little bit of black or gray in here. Let me unravel. Maybe I didn't use black. I don't think I did. But it is a speckled colorway and it has those colors. And red, I'm sorry, it has red in it as well. So it has red, brown, two shades of purple, and navy. Excuse me. So I haven't labeled this one yet, but this is Sister. Use your paint. It was inspired kind of by the character and also by the scene where, at the end of the season, if you know what I mean, where she's supposed to be using her paint. Anyway, I'm not going to say any more to that in case I'm spoiling. Um, and then I have two colors here. So this one was already in the shop. This one is the Potion of Despair colorway, which was a colorway I dyed up a couple of weeks ago, I believe. And then this is the Potion of Dream and Sleep. This is one that I haven't dyed. Um, this is the second time that I've dyed it since the original color that I dyed. <laughs> I can't even speak anymore. So these were also dyed intending to potentially use them in the same project. But they're both Harry Potter potions. Potion of Despair is the potion uh, where <clears throat> when Harry and Dumbledore go to the island and they go to the middle of the lake and have to drink the potion. It's actually a green uh, type of potion. So Potion of Despair is what it's called. And then this is the Potion of Dreamless Sleep, which is also described in the books. I think Severus Snape describes it in his potions class. There you go. So this one has all different shades of blue and green, and teal, purple, and black. And then the other colors that I have right now in the shop are Ron Weasley. This is on Merino DK. This is navy and a burnt orange, brighter orange. It's pretty much the colors that are in there. <clears throat> I also have a couple skeins left of his mother's eyes, which is a really delicate colorway. Um, it's a blue that breaks purple, kind of like a straw yellow color and sage green. It's really delicate. And the last color that's in there right now is Classic Slasher, which is another Halloween colorway. I'm not going to dye this again for the rest of the year, I don't think. So if you want it, I think there are a couple of skeins of this left. It is also the color that's in like one of the kits that is left. This is Classic Slasher. So it's black and red and gray, speckled. So anyway, <clears throat> I think this is going to be it for me. I'm seriously starting to lose my voice right now and I like to get this edited and uploaded today, which is Tuesday. Um, I hope you guys have had a wonderful few weeks. I hope that you enjoyed seeing everyone's coverage of the Ryan Beck Festival. If you couldn't have been there, I hope that you have lived joyously and vicariously through others' experiences and I hope that next year you're able to go and I'm able to meet you. Um, if you have any questions for me, uh, you can always reach me here on YouTube. You can always message me on Instagram, which isn't always the most reliable. Um, you can also send me an email if you'd like. <coughs> or if you have a question about um, a colorway or an order, you can send me a message through my website or through Etsy. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'm going to try and die a little more this week. Hopefully you'll see some updates on Instagram from me. And that's really about it. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.